For those of you who don't know, this is the second tragic eulogy I have given in my lifetime. The first, I shared the honor with my sister of giving my brother's eulogy over 16 years ago. And now I stand before you to give my beautiful husbands. Jeremy and my brother never had the chance to meet, but I talked about him often and knew Eric would have loved Jeremy, as we all know he was difficult not to love. Ever since Jeremy moved over to Station 5, he would tell me that he felt as though Eric was watching over him, because that was my brother's number, number five. I can only hope that they are now together, finally <coughs> getting to know each other, watching over the kids, myself, and all of you who are, who are in need of a little extra love these days. Jeremy was so much more than what met the eye. Because of our age difference, I had always teased him that if he wasn't so good looking, I wouldn't be with him. <laughs> but it was so much more than that. His outgoing personality was what had attracted me to him in the first place. His amazing adventures inspired me. His knowledge as a firefighter was amazing. And seeing him in uniform was, of course, an added bonus. <laughs> his ability to be open-minded and supportive with most things was admirable. He was always my greatest supporter in any big decisions I had to make. He was one of the strongest people I ever knew, and he was always my rock whenever I needed him. He was also always good at finding my things when they were lost. Granted, he was the one who had moved him in the first place. <laughs> he had what I would call a passion for rearranging most rooms in our house. He was always so excited to show me how things were going to work and feel better and I would just get aggravated because I'm still looking for silverware in the wrong drawer, even though he rearranged that six months ago. <laughs> Jeremy and I also had, a different, had different opinions on when it was appropriate to fill up a gas tank. <laughs> he preferred to fill his at a quarter of a tank, me. I preferred to fill mine well past the E. <laughs> I used to always assure him that I had never run out of gas and I knew what I was doing, until one day I didn't. I got myself stuck on the side of 146, and Jeremy was more than happy to be my knight in shining armor. And not once did he give me any sort of I told you so. He was humble and gracious. He always was when it came to me. The amount of love he felt towards me and our children was indescribable, and it radiated off of him. Anyone who has had a conversation with him about his kids knows exactly what I am talking about. I don't know that I have met a prouder dad. Jeremy, I always admired you as a father. You had no issues putting housework and yard work aside if it meant getting to play with the kids. I was envious of you, although I'd be lying if I said it didn't drive me a little insane. You brought so many smiles to our children. The love they have for you is boundless, and I don't know that I will be able to fill that void. I see you and Cassidy with her love for the outdoors and need for climbing. I see you in Sebastian with his goofy sense of humor and his love for cuddling. I see you in Wyatt with his never-ending sense of adventure and his unconventional dance moves. <laughs> you have made me a better person, made me more accepting of my emotions, however crazy they seem to be. You were always so optimistic that we could take our kids on ambitious adventures and I was always so hesitant because it never seemed practical with such little ones. Your love for life and adventure was like no other. Your love in general was like no other. It was limitless. If you were given the opportunity, you would have showered me with love and affection all day and every day. Jeremy, all I ever wanted was for you to be happy. Before we got married and your hair was so long, you had asked me if I wanted you to cut it. The truth is, yes, I did. <laughs> but all I told you is whatever made you happy and that I wanted you to feel good about yourself. Because if you were happy, I was happy. We were fortunate enough to afford to send you on two awesome rafting trips with Mike and his crew, and people thought I was crazy. How could I be okay sending you away and keeping all the kids? How could I be okay with you going on another vacation while I stayed home? Because I knew it made you happy because you worked so hard every day, all day long with the kids, all the animals, and at the fire department. 
I was especially grateful for the trip you took after the accident. I knew your soul needed it, because aside from myself and your children, the thing you loved the most was paddling, and you always came back so full of life and so refreshed. All I ever wanted in this world was for you to be happy. So the entire Cranston Fire Department, I know this loss burns you just as much as me, and it's heartbreaking that it has taken such a tragic event for me to fully understand the true depth of the brother and sisterhood. With that being said, my family and I would not be able to get through this difficult time without you by our sides. Your outpouring of love and support is nothing shy of miraculous. To all of the brothers and sisters, Jeremy was honored to work with each and every one of you. To Matt Bellini, Scott Robinson, Craig Massey, Kyle Kelleher, and Dan Andre, your love and attentiveness did not go unnoticed when planning these heart-wrenching services. To the class of 06, he considered each and every one of you brothers and loved you as such. To Butch, Kyle, Steve, and Mike, you are more than brothers, more than best friends. I actually sometimes question if he loved you more than he loved me. <laughs> Thank you all for bringing so much love, light, laughter, and I'm sure a little bit of mischief to my husband's life. I can never repay the Cranston Fire Department for all of that. To all of Jeremy's brothers and sisters, family and friends, the one thing I need is for you to send me any and all pictures of Jeremy because myself and my children will rely on these to keep his memory alive. If you have any stories you want to send me, I would love those too because I want the kids to be able to know and love their dad the way we all did since their memories will be sparse. Please, I truly mean this. Jeremy's life has never been the same since his car accident in September of 2017. His concussion was so noticeable and present in the beginning. As he healed, those visible and physical symptoms disappeared, but his invisible symptoms lasted through his last day. He talked to me about a stigma attached to an injury where there were no physical signs and symptoms because people don't understand what they cannot see. It was a heavy burden for him to bear. To him, there was no other option other than to overburden himself despite what he was experiencing and try and meet the expectations of those around him. If any of you here are struggling with any kind of internal battle, what I need you to understand is, I am here for you, your friends are here for you, your family is here for you. People love you no matter how much of a burden you think you are. I don't want to be your example, but as I stand up here before you today, I am. Please learn that it is okay to talk about your deepest, darkest feelings, and it is okay to seek outside help. Someone in this world needs you. We need you. I know Jeremy and I share differences in opinion of what the afterlife looks like, and God, if you can hear this, I hope this is the last time I can tell Jeremy, I told you so, and he is standing by your side in heaven. Jim, I pray with every last fiber of my being that we will meet again and I get to hold you and kiss you for an eternity. Until then, I will be forever looking for signs from you to comfort me for the rest of my days. Ed Sheeran said it best on our wedding day, because honey, your soul can never grow old, it's evergreen. Baby, your smile's forever in my mind and memory. I'm thinking about how people fall in love in mysterious ways, and maybe it's all part of a plan. I hope you have found the peace you needed and are smiling down on us all. I cry for you every day, and I will probably always cry for you. 
But I promise, whenever I am ready to transform all the pain I am feeling with the help of everyone here, I will walk with my head held high because I am the proud wife of the dude. <laughs> I love you.